a few years back, I wasn't happy with the life trajectory I was on and I completely burned myself out. Now I'm living my passion, doing what I love, and I'm helping others transform their lives. So in this video, I'm going to be talking about the eight steps to overcome burnout and take back control of your life. So let's dive right in. Number one is change your environment. All right, we've all heard the cliche saying you are the average of the five people you hang around. And I actually don't find this to be true. Okay, shout out to Dan Martell for putting this into words that make sense for me, but you are the average of who you let influence you. So if you're influenced by all the people that you're around, then yes, you're going to have to get yourself out of the environment that you're in. But you could also find influences online now by joining mastermind groups, online communities, and finding mentors online. So I've used both of these principles to take control of my life and change my environment, both physically and my online environment is what I'm saying here. So I moved out of my my hometown a few years back and I moved to a completely different city a few years ago. This forced me to reinvent myself and gave me a whole new perspective on life. When you get yourself out of the environment that you're used to being in, you completely put yourself in a different environment. It's going to change your whole perspective and you're going to be forced to kind of reinvent yourself. So I've also joined multiple accountability groups for both my fitness and my business goals. All right. You'd be surprised on how much being in groups like this can have an impact on the way you behave and think. Okay. So for instance, I had sort of a limiting belief that I just wasn't good enough to compete in bodybuilding, right? But I joined my bodybuilding coaches online community and I see all these people competing and I'm like, you know what? Like they're, they're no better than me. Like I can do that. Right. Another example is, you know, when I started doing online fitness, I transferred from working in a gym to working online with my clients. I had this limiting belief that I'm not going to be able to get them the results. Like no one's going to pay for my services online. And I see all these coaches, right. With less experience than me and they're charging more than I am, you know, getting their clients great results. I'm like, there's no reason why I can't do that as well. Right. So being in these groups can really change your perspective, change your mindset. And it's, you know, even just doing things like that online can can really change a lot about the way you think and your own kind of online environment. So that leads into number two, and that's going to be removing friction. Okay, so don't make things harder on yourself. You could try to like white knuckle your way through the goals that you have, but why use extra willpower when you can make things easier on yourself? Okay, so throw out the junk food. That's probably one of the biggest things I see is just get the things that you're tempted to eat out of your place, like out of your environment. Just throw everything away, okay? Or give it to a friend, right? Go go put it on your friend's doorstep. They'll, They'll probably be happy they got a bunch of junk food, right? So, and then do things like setting your clothes out the night before or packing your meals into a lunchbox so that you can take it to work. Another example is, Get in the habit of bulk prepping your food so that you're not having to cook all your meals on the spot. It's going to make things a lot easier on yourself. Remove all of those little frictions that will make it harder to reach your goals. All right, These little changes can make such a big difference in the long run. All right, I had trouble, just an example for you guys, Like I, I had trouble prioritizing drinking enough water every day. And I would procrastinate it and then I'd be chugging water late in the day late in the night, like causing me to have to wake up in the middle of the night multiple times to go pee and stuff like that. Um, So the simple change that I made was I put my big 30 ounce tumbler right by my coffee maker so that when I'm making coffee in the morning, it's like, it's impossible to forget to drink that 30 ounces of water. Right. So I chug that while I'm making my coffee in the morning and just by removing that little bit of friction, right? Like making it impossible for me to forget has made it that much easier and made it a habit that sticks every single day. Okay. So that's just a couple examples for you guys of removing that friction. Now that leads into number three, and that's going to be taking extreme ownership and shout out to Jocko Willink. He's got a book called extreme ownership. I would, I would highly recommend listening to that audio book or reading that book. Super powerful, but it's really easy guys. You know, it's, it's easy to play the victim. Right? It's easy to come up with excuses on why you can't reach your goals, but you, but you have to realize that you're never going to reach your goals with that mindset. 
Whether you reach your goals or not, it's 100% your fault. That's the mindset you have to have. My client success coach, Coach Herb, always says the universe doesn't give you what you want. It gives you what you deserve. And this can be a humbling realization, but I think it's I think it's a beautiful thing, honestly, myself. You know, take the actions necessary and you'll become the person who deserves the things you want. So I'm going to leave it pretty short and sweet on that one, but that leads us right into number four, and that's replace negative habits or bad habits with positive addictions. Okay, when people think of discipline, they usually think about, I've got to add all these new habits in. The reality is that discipline is more about removing than it is about adding new habits. When you have bad habits, they're holding you back and there's no room for the new ones. So I challenge you to do kind of a self audit. I've talked about this before, but do a self audit. Think about all the habits that you're wasting your time and that are making you feel like you're too busy for good habits. How many hours a week are you watching Netflix and or sports events? Take a look at your screen time on your phone. I recently made my phone black and white <laughs> and it's made it a lot less addicting. And I also recently removed all the notifications from my phone. So I'm not constantly distracted every 30 seconds from bings and you know notifications and stuff like that. And this has made it so that you know I can write YouTube scripts like this without getting distracted every 30 seconds. I can actually focus for a decent duration of time. And once you remove bad habits, replace them with healthy addictions. Like just in that example that I said, right? I'm, I'm becoming, honestly, like I love writing. It's become like kind of an addiction of mine, like writing content, writing YouTube scripts like this. So I've replaced like the addiction of bad habit of me just checking my phone every 30 seconds with like, I want to come up with a really good piece of content, you know, and you can get addicted to working out. You can get addicted to walking. You can get addicted to eating healthy foods that make you feel good. When you're not constantly getting synthetic hits of dopamine from screen sucking, eating highly processed foods, you know, when you're not getting those little hits of dopamine that just give you that little bit of pleasure, you'll start getting addicted to healthy habits that make you feel good in the long term. So that leads me into number five, educate and research over consuming mindless content. Start curating your content so that you're only consuming positive content that aligns with your goals. Subscribe to YouTube channels that uplift, motivate, and educate you to stay on track. Like this channel, for example little wink there <laughs> and stop doom scrolling on TikTok shorts and reels. Like I recently removed TikTok from my phone, right? Cause it was just mindless entertainment, just sucking my time. And I've made a huge conscious effort to shift from entertainment on YouTube to only educational content. And then audiobooks on audible is what I'm only, that, that's like all I'm trying to consume now. And when you do this, you're literally shifting your mind from needing those that constant entertainment, those constant little hits of dopamine, you're shifting from that to needing that constant reinforcement of the path that you're on to reach your goals. So that leads me to number six, reward yourself for achieving goals, not just rewarding yourself for pleasure. Okay, so you should have rewards set up along the way on your journey, but use them as just that, a reward. Okay, and rewards are earned. Right? I know we live in kind of the participation trophy era, but I still believe rewards should be earned. Right, So instead of thinking of it as a cheat meal, think of it as a reward meal. If you were on track all week, by all means, go enjoy a nice a nice reward meal. You earned it. Okay, if you are um don't just buy things because you want them in the moment, right? Something I do is if I really want to buy something, I'll tell myself that, all right, once, once I reach a certain milestone, I'll go and buy it. Okay. So for example, this sure mic that I'm talking into right here, um, was actually a reward for once I hit a thousand subscribers on YouTube, that was a goal that I had. I was like, all right, you know what? Once I hit that one K I'm going to get myself a nice microphone because I earned it. Right. And I've got a new goal. Like once I reach this certain financial milestone that I'm shooting for, 
I'm going to finally buy myself a proper work desk and work chair. I've been working off of a, a bar, <laughs> a hand-me-down bar is what my computer sits on. Um, and I've been sitting at a bar stool the last three years. So I'm, you know, <laughs> it's almost like I'm delaying that gratification. But once I hurt, once I hit this certain financial milestone, I'm getting myself a nice worst work desk, a nice ergonomically correct computer chair. Uh, and that's kind of my reward for, for reaching that. So when you do this, you train your mind um, that you're rewarded for your hard work. Right. And this really does start to kind of rewire the way you think and act on a daily basis. All right. So that leads us into number seven, and that's start before you're ready. Okay. There is never going to be the perfect time to start. All right. Don't be the typical new year, new me person who lasts two weeks and then falls off their goals. Right. I challenge you to start right now, literally right now, after you like and subscribe and share this with someone <laughs> who it might help. After watching this video, start taking action. All right. I'm going to leave that one nice and simple. Start before you're ready, guys. That leads us into the last tip here. Give it at least four to six months. All right. True transformation is not going to happen in a month, guys. Like you're going to have to give it at least four to six months to really ingrain a new lifestyle. All right. I'd really say closer to a year is more realistic. But if you follow the steps in this video, then you really can be unrecognizable this year. So like I said, don't wait until the new year. We got two months left in the year. Start right now. Start taking these actions. Start changing the way you think and act on a daily basis. And you can be 100% unrecognizable in 2025. So go take action, take control, and elevate every damn day. And I'll see you in the next video. Peace. Elevate. Only obligation is to tell it straight.